You didn't see the SmackDown show, but the uh, show's a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's improved a lot. And there was one excellent match on the show. Uh, they did a Ronda Rousey segment where she's playing Steve Austin. She's been fined and suspended, but she shows up every week. And there were loud Rousey chants. They were super into her, and she wanted her suspension lifted. Adam Pierce came out with security. She beat up security, and then finally the police arrested her. And uh, it's working. And the funny thing is we had Liv Morgan out later, and she wasn't booed. So that uh, Liv Morgan finish and the uh, Liv Morgan reaction for that first... Uh, that first interview she did, it was largely a one-night thing. She's she's back to being a babyface here. So uh, we'll see what happens. Toxic Attraction versus Natty and Sonya. Toxic Attraction uh, replaced Zoe Stark and uh, Nikita Lyons. Zoe Stark's got a concussion. Nikita Lyons couldn't get into Canada. And, and uh, uh, she she's not she's not vaxxed. I think people know that. So it's like, which I do not understand when you're, um, I mean, granted, granted, she lives in Florida. She only works in Florida. But, and they probably told her late, you know, and that's a problem. You know, if you're more organized, um, you know, you would tell her weeks ahead so she could do that. But, you know, they didn't. Or if she refused, you know, I mean, to me, if you refuse, you shouldn't even get pushed, you know, in this day and age. Because it's like, I'm not, this is not even a debate on, on whether it's good or bad. But they are an international touring company. And there are places that you cannot go if you're not vaxxed. And part of your job is to, you know, is to get vaxxed so you can go to Canada, especially with this, you know, this this Canadian tour. And this was her big break. And that's just a, I don't know if it's a communication issue. If it's if, if it's a communication issue, that's on WWE in a sense that they should prepare these people and let them know enough ahead of time, because. They announced they announced her in the tournament weeks ago. It was weeks ago that they announced her in the tournament. Right. So so you know either they didn't know, and I can believe they didn't they didn't know because it's not something that they would, because um, because she's only working in Florida. But at some point they should have just told her. And if she refuses, you know, at that point it's just kind of like, well, you know, if your goal is to make the main roster, and we go to England and we go to all these countries. Um, you should not have that option. You you know what I mean? It's like you're then you don't want to be on the main roster enough because we were an international touring company. And so, you know, I don't know how this is all going to play out, but it should not have it should. You know, the reality is, is that Zoe Stark should have had a different partner to begin with. There are people who are, you know, you know, further along than her, closer to the main roster, closer to main roster ready than her anyway. And, you know, that so I, I, I there, it was it was a botch, you know, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. exactly, You know, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's a company botch. They advertised it weeks ago and somehow it happened this way. So there you go. Well, the other issue is that this also in some ways exposed one of the big issues with developmental, which is they go down there and they practice their matches for a week or two before television. And Gigi and JC get the last-minute call to replace right. them. They get flown to Canada, and uh, this match was not good. And it was, but they're uh, they're. I mean, I mean, you know, I know, I know, you're saying like they have had passable matches on television and everything, but you know, they really aren't that. They aren't. They are not main roster ready. No, and my point is, you need to learn to be main roster ready. You need to learn that. Shit's going to happen, and you may have an hour to get your match ready, and you're not going to have a week to practice with your buddies in Florida. And they went in there against Natty and Sonia, and, you know, Natty was trying to call this whole match for everybody, and it was uh, it was not very good. And then finally at the end, Natty got pinned, so Toxic Attraction has moved on in this tournament. Uh, J.C. Jane rolled up Natty for the win, and so they take on Raquel and Aaliyah next week, which uh, may not be good. Hopefully, they got a week to practice that one. Yeah, well, they are. You know, they are all based in. I think Raquel and Aaliyah are still based in Orlando. So yeah, they they have a week. So, and they have they have worked together. So yeah, we had a Sammy Roman backstage segment that was absolutely. Absolutely phenomenal. These two guys were so awesome playing off each other. Sammy's back there and he's complaining about Jay Uso's yelling at him all the time and and this and that. And 
All of a sudden, he, he's, he has one line too far, and he realizes, ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have said that. And he gets all quiet, and then Roman looks at him and goes, you're right. And now Sammy's all excited, and Roman goes to do something, and the phone rings, and Sammy picks it up, and it's the Usos. They, they can't get over the border. And so he tells Roman, and, like, Roman's all worried about it, but Sammy goes, I'm here tonight. And so this sets up the uh, big spot there at the main event. And they also had the moment right when Sammy's all excited that he's, like, totally in with Roman. Roman goes, you still friends with that Kevin Owens? Sammy goes, yeah, yeah, we're great friends. You know, we're around here. Roman goes, I don't like that guy. <laughs> I don't like what he said about uh, about me. And then Sammy goes, well, you know, he's on Raw and I'm on SmackDown. I really don't see him all that much. So they're building up this Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens thing for down the line. We had uh, Maximum Male Models out, hit row, uh, interrupts, beats him up, and then does a very long performance. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of crowd sweetening. Uh, some people said there were a lot of boos live. It was hard to hear when I was watching. I don't know what the reaction really was, but they were out there performing for a long time. Maxine tried to dance, and Max dragged her to the back. The Maximum Male Models thing is so dead. It is like one of the most, like... The one that they had last week was so amateurish, that segment. I mean, you know, um, Maxine is is like deer in the headlights. I mean, um, you know, Max Dupree is great, you know, as far as talking, but he's been given the lamest material. And those two guys trying to do poses were so awkward, and they were so non... They they looked like, like parodies of, like, the worst model... Ever as opposed to well, that to, is the gimmick. Yeah, but it's brutal. I mean, it's not like it's not like it's just brutal. It's like a it's it's just a waste of for, of everyone's time. It's they're just they're just bad. We had a Kieran Cross Scarlet uh, pre tape package about Drew McIntyre uh, as an interview, and um, this was by miles and miles the best promo Kieran Cross has ever cut on the main roster. But it was here in a pre tape. Then we had a fatal five way, which was Sheamus, Sami Zayn, Happy Corbin, Madcap, and Ricochet. Winner gets a shot at uh, Gunther at the uh, at the pay per view. This match was awesome. They got twenty three minutes. Sami Zayn is just the biggest babyface in the history of Earth on this show. Oh yeah, and he's working as a total babyface in the match. And then finally, there's this big move, and uh, I think. Corbin hit him with something or whatever, and he grabs his shoulder, and he has to be taken to the back. And so everyone else does all their spots, and it's all a big build to Sammy making his big return. The place goes crazy for his big return. And I'm watching this match, and I'm just thinking, dude, you know, these, this guy should win. But they're not doing Sami Zayn and Gunther at the pay-per-view, so how are they going to get out of this thing right here? So it was actually very clever what they did. He hit his big kick, he goes for the cover, and Corbin yanks him out of the ring. And so everybody absolutely hates Baron Corbin. They're booing him out of the building. They're so angry at him. And so he has so much heat that all of a sudden uh, there's a couple of spots, and then Sheamus hits Corbin with a bro kick. And they hated Corbin so much that they actually pop when Sheamus pinned him. So, I, I mean, I was pretty impressed with the way they did it. But Sheamus now will be facing Gunther at Clash of the Castle which at least we know is a match where they'll just beat the hell out of each other. Yep. We had a Viking Raiders uh, funeral segment for the New Day. They burned a bunch of their stuff. Sarah Logan was here. They didn't mention her. You didn't really see her. They just had a woman from behind. It was her, which I don't think necessarily means anything, but they used her for that. Then we had uh, Liv Morgan promo, and she had a match with uh, Shotzi. She beat Shotzi. And then afterwards, Shayna Baszler jumps her from behind, and she lays her out. Uh, Liv Morgan's got her arm taped. So uh, Shayna bends the arm. She steps on the wrist. And she's about to stomp the arm. But she stops. And she boots Liv in the head instead. And she basically says, if I break your arm, I'm not going to get that shot at the pay-per-view. So I'm going to break your arm there. So Shayna did a good job. And it was a good segment. One thing to mention... Um the show will air on television in the UK as opposed to, you know, being exclusive to the WWE Network. Um, so it's on BT Sports. So it will be the first time since in in a long, long time that a pay-per-view has been a television special in the UK. So they're, it's probably going to be, 
in theory, it should be the largest audience to watch WWE, um, any WWE show, um, since they got on BT Sports, at least, if not further back than that. Then the main event was Roman Reigns and Drew doing a face-to-face. And one of the things, one of the reasons the show was so good was there was so much heat from, like, the beginning of the show to the end. And Roman's out there. They're going crazy for him. Roman chants. And then uh, Drew McIntyre comes out, and they're doing their uh, face-to-face and et cetera. McIntyre wants to fight, and uh, they have this brief brawl. Drew goes for the Claymore, but Sami Zayn flies in. He takes the kick for Roman Reigns. So uh, uh, McIntyre hits him with the Claymore. And then uh, Reigns goes for the Spear, and McIntyre pops up and lays him out with the Claymore. So uh, we got both guys hitting, uh, laying each other out. Or actually, it was uh, Drew laying out... Drew laid out Sammy on accident, but then he laid out Roman. So he, he ended up standing tall and holding up both belts. So it was a good segment. Sammy got his big pop for making the save. And uh, overall, it was a good show. So uh, the show is... It's better. Although there's still some issues, which are going to take a while to remedy. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.